The stag was never designed to meet a carefully researched market need. It only happened at all because stylist Giovanni Michelotti had strong links with Triumph and wanted something to show off his styling skills at the 1965 Turin Motor Show. By mid-1970, the Stag was on public sale using Triumph's new 3-litre V8, later changed to Rover's V8, and the distinctive rollover bar to solve the problem of rigidity with the monocoque shell. I'm not sure that um, when the Stag was launched that Triumph had a clear idea of their primary target. I think they were looking at um, the 45 baby boomers before they boomed. And, uh, um, uh, and that's me. Um, you know, they were looking at my generation to buy the stag before we'd made the money that we needed to buy the stag. In 1973, the stag was revised with no major changes made. Customers now got a hard top as standard, as well as the removable soft top, and the car also received some subtle styling tweaks. It shouldn't have been seen as a sports car. It was more a, a touring car. Um, that Triumph V8 engine had a lot of problems. Um, it, it was a bit unreliable, to be honest, um, and it was very intolerant of getting too hot. If it got hot, the heads warped, um, the water got into the oil, and you were in big problems. And once it had gone wrong, it was very, very difficult to make it work again. As a result of rather dubious build quality, only 25,000 stags were built in its seven-year period. It still remains, though, a popular and desirable classic car, owing to its relative rarity and modern features such as power steering, aircon and electric windows. Some open-top sports cars don't even have them today.